So at this time, maybe you have realized that the problem here is the fact that we have 21 constants to determine. So if we want to characterize the elastic properties of materials, we have to give all the components, we have to determine why, how, the experiments for every material, the 25 components, the 21 components of this. So this is not operational. And we, in general, engineers, have done as many simplifications as possible about that. So they introduced something that is enough for engineering purposes in many times, which is the concept of isotropy. What is the isotropy? Do you know the, 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 the meaning of the physical uh, definition of isotropic? Some property is said to be isotropic if that property is the same in all directions. It's the same in all directions. Some property is said to be orthotropic if this property can be qualified into, uh, uh, is different in the, in the different directions, but can be obtained just by knowing the properties on two orthogonal directions. So the property isotropy and orthotropy are referred that in the first case, the property is the same, whatever is the direction we look for it, and in the orthotropic case, the property depends on typically uh, two the directions. Well, so we postulate if, 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 if a material, elastic material, is, ortho, is ortho, orthotropic, that means that the, what quantifies the properties of this material, C? C is a fourth order tensor. I've told you many times that you have to distinguish mm -hmm. about what is the tensor and what are the, their components. So a tensor is an entity and their components depend on the basis in which we describe this entity. Remember that? I told you the concept of a vector that is always a vector going from one point to that point, but the components of this vector may depend on the basis that I am using today, and also for higher order tensors. So, if a material is orthotropic, meaning that their, 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 it's their properties that do not depend on the direction, how does it translate into a fourth order tensor that depends, that, that describes these properties? Well, the components of this tensor should be the same in all directions. So they should be the same in all bases. For instance, in all scalar variables, all scalar tensors are orthotropic. Why? Because disregard the system of coordinates, the value of an scalar, a tensor, order zero tensor always is the same. The components are always the same. None, none uh, different from zero vector is orthotropic. Because as, I, as soon as I change the, the components, the components, I, the, the, as soon as I change the, the basis, the components of the vector change. There are a number of second order tensors. There is a family of second order tensors which are isotropic. Remember which one are they? What are the family of second order tensors that whose components do not change as we change the basis? Do you remember that? The identity tensor. The identity tensor is a vector that when I change the components, the components are also 1, 0, 0, 1. Or 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And of course, if the identity tensor is isotropic, any scalar times the identity tensor is isotropic. So, a, a scalar multi multiplied by the identity tensor, 1, is isotropic. Well, again, what about fourth order tensor? Well, the most general description of isotropic fourth order tensor is that. So if I take a second order tensor, which is the open product of the identity second order tensor times the identity second order tensor. So this is the component IJKL of this, is delta IJ delta KL. I multiply it times an scalar lambda. And now I consider this fourth order tensor which has this expression. That is the, 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 the fourth, 
the, the unit, uh, fourth order unit tensor, which, whose component i, j, k, l is that, delta i, k, delta j, l, delta j, j, k, l. Anyway, this one. It can be proven that this is a unit tensor in fourth order tensors because double dot multiplication of this tensor times any fourth or second order tensor returns uh, the same tensor. So let's consider that tensor whose components are that, are the, those divided by two. And let's multiply it by mu and let's sum them up with that term and this returns a family of tensors. So this is a family of tensors, okay? Well, it can be proven, that's not something that I'm requesting to you, that if I change the basis, the components of these tensors doesn't change. Okay, so the general, the more general expression of an isotropic, so not changing with directions, fourth order tensor is that. This is in, in compact notation, this is an in initial notation. C equal lambda one open product times one plus two mu times the, the, the tensor identity tensor. Well, now let's apply this concept to the elasticity tensor, to the to the uh, tensor that defines the material property, the elastic properties of a material. If we want to describe a constitutive equation that is the material properties being identified by this and we want that these properties are isotropic, then we have to require that this tensor is isotropic. So we can now say that the number of properties, or number of different of the properties characterizing C, which in the general case, I recall, that they were stated to be, remember how many? 21. If you assume the hypothesis of isotropic behavior, so the material is isotropic, we just reduce them to how many? Look, if I just know this constant lambda and this constant mu, this then I know the full tensor C just by doing these operations. These constants lambda and mu are, are called the Lame parameters. Lame again was another scientist of the cold polytechnic who worked on elasticity. So finally, we see that as, as we assume, which we will uh, for uh, many cases, isotropic uh, constitutive behavior, elastic constitutive behavior, which translates into assuming that the elastic constitutive tensor has this structure in terms of lambda and mu, only two properties need to be identified from uh, experimental tests to obtain the full, uh, the, the, the full uh, constitutive tensor. Okay? And this is, of course, an assumption which is very reasonable. This is what makes possible that when you want to characterize a concrete in a work and you take some, uh, some specimens of this, some samples of this concrete, in these cylindrical samples, you remember, maybe you are familiar with that, right? And you send to the laboratory to make tests on that in order to characterize that concrete. Then, you, in order to characterize the elastic property of this concrete, you only need two parameters, not 21. So maybe doing a couple of, of tests on this specimen, you can obtain what are the elastic properties of this concrete and see how much these properties are the ones that have been assumed in the project. And see if you are manufacturing something that resembles what was projected, okay? Not, but, but imagine that instead of that, you have to characterize 21 properties. That would be uh, unaffordable, okay? So this is the advantage of the common assumed uh, isotropicity, isotropic character of the uh, constitutive uh, of the elastic material. Well, what are the consequences of that? Look, if I now replace in the general uh, constitutive equation, constitutive equation relating the stresses and the strain for elastic materials, we replace this particular structure of C and we do the operations, you know, we can follow these operations. For the component IJ, we multiply C, IJ, KL, Epsilon, KL, and now 
I put here the component AJKL of this tensor, that, that component. I do that, and now I, I do multiplications. For instance, when I multiply epsilon KL times delta J delta KL, what is the operation to do? Well, first, delta, K, delta KL times epsilon KL means that this operation is zero except when K equal to L. So what we have to do is just put here epsilon LL. But epsilon LL is nothing else than the trace of epsilon, because there are one index repeated. It's just the sum of the terms. So this is lambda delta ij times the trace of, L, of epsilon, which is that here, OK? And if we do that, this operation is also here, we finally obtain that this operation, finally, are, can be expressed as uh, mu times epsilon ij, 2 mu, 2 mu, times epsilon j, okay? So finally, that is a mistake here, is, is, uh, is two mu, okay? So finally, we obtain that component sigma j can be expressed as lambda traps trace of epsilon times delta ij plus two mu times epsilon ij. Now, expressing this equation in compact way, we see that this is the component ij of tensor sigma, this is component ij of a tensor, which is that scalar times 1. And this is component ij of 2 mu times epsilon. So finally, we see that now the Hooke's law gets this specific equation. The stresses equal lambda, first Lamy parameter, times the trace of the strains times the identity, plus 2 mu times the identity, or written in uh, components in notation, in addition notation, is that for aj equal to 1 to 3. Look that this keeps the symmetry of the stress tensor, so sigma aj is equal to ji, and then the symmetry of the strain, uh, the strain tensor, because replacing aj times aj doesn't change anything. So this is what is called the isotropic linear elastic constitutive equations for isotropic materials, the Hooke's law. Lambda and mu are two parameters that need to be characterized by experiments and are the Lamy, the Lamy coefficients. Okay? And that's the one that you will find in any book of elasticity. Before, let's look now for the specific uh, form of the elastic potential, that elastic potential that was nothing else, that one half, one half of epsilon C epsilon. So what happens when we Re replace here the structure of C that is given in, in that in, in for the elasticity tensor for the, for the that that the, the, uh, the structure of C. So we have to replace that. And one possible way is just realizing that U is one half of sigma times epsilon. That is sigma. That is epsilon. We do the operations. Look again. If we multiply double dot product of one times epsilon. That's the trace of epsilon. So it's lambda trace of epsilon times trace of epsilon again, plus if we replace 2 mu epsilon times epsilon, this is 2 mu epsilon times epsilon. So finally, for these isotropic materials, the elastic potential, the density of energy, of internal energy, which is the elastic potential, is one half of lambda trace of epsilon squared plus mu epsilon double dot epsilon. And it has to be fulfilled that when we differentiate that with respect to the strains, so this finally is a function of the strains, we should recover the stresses. And that is something that you can do as an example. Try to differentiate the strains, that expression, with respect to the strains, and after that you would recover that expression here, which is the stresses. So again, as it should be, that potential is still that, that function, the internal energy, the density of internal energy, is still a potential for the stresses in terms of the strains, fulfilling this equation.